Hello and welcome to Psyched Substance and today we are going to do something that I don't believe anybody has done before. As you can see, we are going to be talking about and testing sea sponge DMT. Now I first heard about this uh, unique compound when I noticed it was available. Next, I scoured the internet to find out uh, exactly what it is supposed to do, and I found very little data. In fact, I could only find two experience reports online, one of them from someone who combined a whole bunch of other compounds with it, which totally nullifies his results, and the other by the scientist who first synthesized it, who said, With 40 milligrams smoked, I closed my eyes and found myself drifting through the ocean on an ice flow shaped like a puzzle piece. There is a silkening of my own somewhat bristly hair, and a marish but not quite there. I think he means he's kind of tripping, but not tripping. Very light and not aggressive, not nauseating. Drugs such as this are aptly described as serenic. If you view the Wikipedia page on it, it basically states that an active dose is 20 to 50 milligrams vaped, meaning the freebase version. It lists the effects as being sedative and antidepressant, which is very interesting. It also says there is some psychedelic effects reported. However, I'm assuming that this notation is based off the one experience report. There is no human trials that I'm aware of that have been done with it. It's active in the three sponges listed here. Smenospongia aurea, Smenospongia echina, and Vecongula rigida. Vecongula rigida. It sounds like we're summoning Vegeta. Vegeta, what's the power level of the SpongeBob drug? <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. So today we have returned to form. We are back in professional attire, meaning this video by default must be done by a professional member of society who hasn't lost their mind yet. Oh, uh, well, I mean, yeah. Um, any, what are you looking at me down there for, huh? Who are you? Who are you to judge? Get out of my face. Anyway, so here we are. What we are going to be doing is a first because we are going to first run this compound. Where is it? We're going to first run this laboratory, made in a lab, extremely rare DMT compound through all of these various analytical reagents to test the color reactions that we get simply for the sake of science and for safety and because it's never been documented before. Anyway, 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 without further ado, let's jump right into testing and seeing what we get. Oh. Also want to point out that what we are going to do is after we test the compound in, uh, you know, more ways than one, we are going to check, no, we're not going to be reviewing the Apple AirPods Max, but we are going to check how it, well, you know, whether it either increases or decreases our appreciation for music. We're going to do a coordination test and we are going to do a, I guess, just mood and physical well-being test. We're, we're going to do a few tests to gauge if there are any active effects. We might even check my resting heart rate and blood pressure just to keep things really scientific. And yeah, we're going to essentially see what happens. And uh, I do want to point out this is not something that I would recommend anybody watching were to do. Testing compounds that have virtually no history of human use is extremely dangerous. Well, this is a completely legal compound, meaning anybody can, you know, acquire it, at least in the country that I reside in via the ClearNet. It is still not going to be safe. There's plenty of legal things that aren't safe, and um, well, maybe not say that it's not safe, but it does have the potential for harm. We have virtually no idea how this is going to affect the human brain. Apparently, the sea sponge uses it to fend off intruders. Like it's like its form of toxin, kind of like how those Bufo alvaris toads use the 5-methoxy DMT in their skin as a toxin so the other animals don't eat them. I mean, whether it's actually a toxin or it's just sending other animals straight to God and they're like, holy crap, I wasn't ready for that kind of trip yet, and they leave it alone because of that, who knows? Regardless, let's see what this sea sponge DMT has to offer. I think this is insanely fascinating. The discovery of sea sponge DMT opens the doors wide to perhaps a whole new area of exploration. I mean, what other mystical sponges or seaweeds or anemones are floating at the bottom of the ocean just waiting for us to smoke them? Let's get right into this. According to YouTube guidelines shown here, videos which intend to educate are documentary by nature and do not glorify the use of drugs. Both abide by the community safety guidelines and are eligible for monetization. The following video does not glorify the use of drugs. Instead, attempts to be non-biased while delivering not life-saving information disguised as entertainment. We do not display graphic use. There are no scenes showcasing drug consumption, and any insinuation of use should be taken as satirical at best. Thanks, YouTube. And don't forget to visit our Patreon page after the video for extra content and behind-the-scenes footage that only our patrons get to see. I love you, motherfucker. All right. 
Let's get right into testing. Just to let you guys all know, there is a link in the video description so you can acquire all of these analytical test reagents for yourself. These are completely legal. There, there's nothing wrong or dangerous about them except for the fact that they are corrosive, so you should probably wear gloves. What these do is they test to make sure that the compound you ingest is what you think it is, so essentially they are used to save a person's life. I don't want to get into too much detail about what these reagents are, but if you've watched any of my videos, then you know you definitely need to test it before you ingest it if you value your life. Just going off the dealer's word is sometimes suicide. So make sure you pick up these test kits if you plan to consume any compound. Uh, regardless, let's get right into testing our SpongeBob DMT. Let's see how this goes. So the first thing you do is you make a pile on our uh, little mat here. In the comments below, let me know what you think this is and where it came from. So I'm going to make a few small piles and let's, um, let's just see where we go. If you're testing a compound, you actually just need like a grain of salt worth. You don't need very much of it at all to see a reaction. So you don't really, you're not really wasting your stuff doing this. And uh, yeah, it's really just keeping you alive. So even if you are wasting it, your life is worth wasting a few specks of some unknown powder. All right, there we go. We have 10 piles of 5-bromo DMT. Commence the drug tests. Thank you, Sir Knight. Uh, to start things off, we are going to use the Ehrlich reagent, which is probably the only one you would need for a compound like this. Essentially, Ehrlich reagent is used for any tryptamine, a indole alkaloid, and what we want to see is a purple, sometimes pink. Things like 1P LSD sometimes turn pink, and with some of these chemicals that we don't really have much data about, such as the uh, lysergamide analogs, they tend to take a lot longer to change. For example, if you were testing uh, LSD with this, it might change to purple in a matter of one to two minutes. But some of the things like even 1A LSD, it can take, I don't know, I've seen it take 20 plus minutes to get a reaction. So if you don't see an instant reaction out of this, it doesn't mean that it's not an indole. But if this doesn't turn purple, then, uh, we probably shouldn't try it because it would suggest that this is not 5-bromo DMT, which would suck for the whole video. So let's start off with the Ehrlich here. Oof. And now we just wait. Notice there's, there's a bit of a yellow tinge to the reagent just on its own. And right now it may look like you're seeing a yellow reaction, but I think what's happening is just the fact of the liquid uh, magnifying the actual crystals and making them appear a little yellowish. Or maybe it is yellow, I don't know. Perhaps that it just changed yellow. Let's just wait and see. Oh, it's looking like something's turning a little purple around the edges there. Let's go, let's keep it changing. Kind of, almost there, still looks a little yellowy in the middle. But yeah, we are seeing the edges begin to turn purple. All right, yep, we can confidently say that that has turned purple. It appears that it's going to continue to slowly change. So we'll just keep an eye on it, but let's get moving and let's test the others. In fact, let's do a close-up with the cell. The GoPro is filming me, filming with the cell. You can see how much closer this lets us get though. Do you see that? It almost looks like it turned a little, you know, yellowy brown and then it went to purple. Very interesting. Next up, we have the Marquis reagent. This one is most famous for being used when people test their MDMA, which they'd be looking for a black reaction. Now, hopefully we don't see any black right now. Oh, shit. Some of it got on the table. This stuff is corrosive. It's going to damage my beautiful table. Where's those paper towels? Oh man, it made an instant mark. No. Let's get that spit action. Oh no. It looks like the spit's working. Perfect, this, the spit worked. Oh no, it's moving into the other piles. All right, you can see I'm a bit of a wreck here. There we go. The marquee is threatening our other piles, Jesus. We got this baby turning more purple. Let's get this over here. So we got that guy turning more purple and the marquee went to yellow and now it's turning a dark brown. 
Uh, yeah, it's continuing to turn brown. Interesting. Well, next up, we got Mr. Mech. Let's see what Mr. Mech has to tell us. Let's try really hard to not miss this time. Bam. All right, Mechie boy, what you got? What you got for us? Let's see. Let's see what you're going to change to. It's looking so far brown again. Look at that higher quality phone image. These GoPros aren't as good as this iPhone. Next up, we got Simon. So for Simon, it's a dual test. You first put the A and then the B, and then we see. Got the A down. Now let's throw the B. No, I don't have to pee. It's looking pleasant to me. My rhymes are lame. Yeah, you can see the corrosiveness of it, eh? Like a, a drop cut on the paper towel there, and it just sizzled through. And I'm not expecting Simons to do anything. You can see the marquee has stopped changing now. It has reached its final form, which is a rather shitty looking poo brown. The Ehrlich has stopped changing. It's a reddish purple. And the Mech is an equally poo colored brown. And Simon doesn't look like he's doing very much. So next up, we got rope -a dope A and B. Same kind of idea. You put a drop of A and then B. And let's see what happens. Yeah, I wasn't expecting anything out of that. As you can see, nothing happened. So let's move on to Liberman. Whoa. Whoa, Liberman goes instant. Dark brown and black. Cool. That's what it looks like. Now we are moving on to Freud. Kind of scattered it. Shit. What am I thinking? Oh, that's right, Adam. You're not. You're never thinking. Kind of missed it there. Got some of my fingers. Give me that paper towel. And that's doing something. The Freud's turning a, a almost greeny brown. It's hard to say yet. I hope some of you guys watching find this as interesting as I do. I find all this sciencey stuff fascinating. Okay, let's continue. Next up, we have mandolin. So mandolin started off being green, all right. When I hear mandolin, I think of the Mandalorian. What a fantastic show. I love when Boba Fett comes in. The mandolin looks like it is turning a little blue or brown. I, I can't freaking tell, let's just keep an eye on it. And last but not least, we are just about done. We are on to the Fallen. It's another one of those A and B stories. So, some A, B fallen on top of that compound. Now let's put some B on it. All right. All right, what do we got? Ooh, it's turning a little brown. Was not expecting that. Thought it was gonna do nothing. Well, there you have it. We have now the first people to analytically test 5-bromo-DMT with a series of reagents uh, for you guys to keep you guys safe. There's all the results. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this science section of the video. We are now going to move on to the other test. Hope you guys all enjoy. Now, before we get into the actual effects that you guys have been waiting for, I need to ask you a very serious question. And that is, are you watching these videos under the protection of a VPN? And if you're not, then why not? We're talking about some very taboo topics here, and you're most likely not just watching videos on it, you're also doing Google searches, looking up the effects of sea sponge DMT, and if you don't have a VPN active, then your internet provider can actually see everything that you're searching, even if you're in incognito mode. And this is the perfect lead up to me telling you all that this video is actually sponsored by a VPN provider. That's right, this video has been sponsored by Surfshark. And if you follow the link in the video description and you enter the code psyched, you will receive 
receive 83% off and an extra three months. This unlocks the absolute best price for a VPN currently on the market. I personally used to use VPNs before I started making all of my stuff so public, unless of course I'm watching Netflix and I wanna change the country because different countries give you different videos. Same with other video sharing websites, which is awesome. You can also do that with the VPN, so there are other benefits. Essentially, a VPN allows you to surf the internet anonymously. It's being truly invisible. You don't leave a digital footprint, which I don't think I need to explain how valuable it is when you're looking up some of this taboo stuff. Another perk is you get to support the channel. If enough of you guys head over to Surfshark and sign up using the code Psyched, just click the link in the video description, then they are likely to sponsor future videos, which helps keep us afloat, which is awesome. So you not only help support the channel, you also keep yourself protected in more ways than you can imagine. I highly, highly recommend everybody uses a VPN service if they're not already, and you get the best price for an awesome VPN. Again, check out Surfshark, follow the link. Huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video, and hopefully we can work with them again in the future. Anyway, let's get on with the actual effects of this compound and enough of my fluffing around. Thanks, guys. If you guys are watching this video on YouTube, then what we're going to do is we are going to just cut straight to the effects of this compound. That's right, I'm not going to show the actual ingestion of it. Just know that I have ingested, or I'm about to ingest, 30 milligrams of this totally legal sea sponge DMT for the sake of science, of course, and to further, um, we'll expand on the amount of data available, even if it's anecdotal and we're just testing some pretty, you know, simple things like heart rate and then my own subjective experience, it's still a, you know, a test as to what this stuff does. Um, anyway, if you're watching on YouTube, what we're going to do is cut straight to the after effects of what it's like. We are not going to show any substance consumption. I apologize. So let's get going with um with these effects. I don't know. Do you guys do you think something's gonna happen? I I kind of <sighs> kind of don't think anything's gonna happen, really. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna blast off, but who knows? Am I nervous? No, I'm not really nervous. I'm more so just curious to see what's going to happen. I have safety measures in place. I mean, there, there's people standing by in case anything dangerous is to happen and we already practiced uh, safe use by consuming a threshold dose. For those of you who don't know, if you're ever going to ingest a new compound, you start things off by taking below the threshold amount. It's actually called an allergy test. Uh, let me just make that correction. Not a threshold. They took an allergy test, meaning say the active dose is 10 milligrams. You would allergy test at like one. All right. It's a very low amount. And the premise of it is to ensure that you aren't allergic to it. It's exactly what it sounds like. So if you start breaking out in hives or it feels like your throat's closing up or if you get overly nauseous or if you really feel anything at all from such a small amount, it is going to suggest that that is a compound that you should probably stay away from. And if you dose any higher, you could be met with some very serious, dangerous consequences that may be irreversible. So I have already successfully passed the allergy test. We then moved on to a threshold amount, meaning like five to 10 milligrams. Absolutely nothing happened. So now we have assessed if I'm allergic to it. We've assessed if this is more potent than it's suggested, and it is not. Didn't get anything off of that. So now we're going to move on to what we believe to be an active dose, and we are going to be pioneers in this field once more, and we're going to see what happens when I ingest SpongeBob DMT. So without further ado, let's, uh, if you're on YouTube, fast forward to the effects and we're going to perform some tests to see if there really are any alterations. I should note now that my resting heart rate is, what is it, what are we at? There we go. Today my average has been 47 beats per minute. Six minutes ago it was at 92 because I was running up and down a driveway, but it is dropping as you can see. It's gonna be higher than my average resting rate just because well, I'm a little bit nervous, and that's what happens. Let's let's get this over with. Whew. Ooh, it smells like DMT. That's interesting. Okay, definitely feeling the nerves, whatever. <sighs> it 
Let's do, do like a let's do a quick round of med, med, meditation first. Tasted very, very much like DMT. Interesting. Kind of burns your throat a little bit. Ugh. Not the most pleasant thing to consume. Definitely some activity. Skin is tingling. Where's my heart rate at? Eighty-five. Didn't skyrocket me at all. Um, yeah, I feel a little tingly. Did I get it all? No, I did. Everything just got really quiet in here. And the world feels very simple. I'm feeling a profound creeping sense of relaxation sweep over me. I feel very calm. But I can still, I have that taste. I don't like leaning. Can we sit back a little bit here? There we go, that's better. <sighs> There's definitely a psychoactive effect because I feel relaxed. I'm a relaxed, broken record. We're just going to see how long we can chill. I'm hungry. Moving is fine. Let's do a music test. As soon as he put headphones on my head, the entire universe began dancing to music. Music sounded the same. Some of you guys out there who are younger and who just a little out of touch with your feelings and, and you get embarrassed watching other people be silly, you might leave some comments and be like, oh, Adam, you're so cringy. Why don't you just be yourself? Why don't you just be normal? Why are you acting so fucking weird? Welcome to my channel, mother effers. I got to find somebody to keep these things interesting for me. You'd think taking the compound itself would be interesting enough, but no. No, I got to dance like a lunatic because it's fun. You don't got to judge yourself so harshly. It's okay.
Mm. Get in the middle! Get on the chopper! No! no. There we go. All right. All right, it has been about one hour, and I would say the effects have, you know, pretty much worn off for the most part. Whatever effects were present. Uh, the effects at the 30 milligram mark were very, um, here I'm yawning, or I don't know what I'm doing. <sighs> very subtle, very, very subtle. I imagine you might have to bump it up to 50 to start getting any visual uh, changes at all. I think that it's just a very chill, relaxed compound. Uh, there wasn't really much psychedelic about it at all. It tasted like DMT, that's for sure. Uh, anyway, that concludes that concludes this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. I'd like to give another thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. It's like the first real sponsored video we've ever had. If you head on over to Surfshark and enter the code PSYCHED, you get 83% off, which unlocks the best price for a VPN server on the market, which allows you to surf the internet safely. You will be invisible. We got a link in the video description to it. If you head there and you enter the code psyched and sign up, you're also supporting the channel because the more of you guys that sign up to their VPN after watching this, the more likely they are to sponsor future videos. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell, even though YouTube shadow bans most of these anyways. It doesn't make much of a difference, but it's worth a shot. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Let me know which uh, unique C fairing or other interesting compound you would like to see me perhaps cover next and there's a 0.1 percent chance i'll listen to your request thanks guys love you all